Welcome to the Real Lost Boss podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of the Real Lost Boss podcast. Today I'm going to discuss 10 common mistakes you have either made or you are making on your weight loss journey. And if any of these are involved in your weight loss journey, it is going to make your journey unhealthy, either physically, mentally, or both of those things. And there is a really good chance it is going to make your journey unsustainable. Number one, you're demonizing certain foods or certain food groups. This is down to a number of reasons, fad diets, people on social media, fear-mongering. But basically, we have to understand there is not one food that makes us fat. The only thing that increases our body fat is overconsumption of calories. So we go into a calorie surplus. Yes, certain foods are more unhealthy, more calorie dense. And if you overconsume those foods, there is a good chance you're going to go into a calorie surplus. But one thing we have to remember and understand is there is no such thing as an unhealthy food. There is just an overall unhealthy diet. Number two, cutting out the foods you love. Now, this kind of relates back to number one. Again, unhealthy relationship with food. This makes me fat. This makes me thin. And any food that you are associating that makes you fat, crisps, chocolate, biscuits, takeaways, you are going to cut them out. And there really is no need. As I said in point one, certain foods, yes, are more unhealthy than others. Certain foods are calorie dense. But if we go and cut out all the foods we love, all that is going to do is trigger cravings. It's going to make you crave those foods. What we need to do is simply build in the foods that we enjoy eating into our calorie allowance. Number three, not fueling the body correctly throughout the day. I get loads of people come to me and go, Neil, I do really well throughout the day, then I blow it at night time. What do you class as doing well throughout the day? Bit of fruit for your breakfast, couple of IV eaters, light Philadelphia and some celery sticks for your lunch. That isn't doing well throughout the day. Yes, you're eating a low amount of calories. You're going to be in a calorie deficit. You're starving yourself. You're never going to solve one problem by creating another problem. So stop it. Because what happens then is when you get tired at night time and you've not eaten enough throughout the day, you start calorie chasing and it is very hard to control. Eat at regular periods throughout the day. And whenever you eat something, make sure you get a good amount of protein and fiber into your system. Now that is fueling the body correctly. Number four, putting way too much emphasis on exercise. The only direct thing exercise does when it comes to weight loss is it burns some calories. And the reality is exercise doesn't actually burn that many calories. If you do regular exercise, you go to the gym, say, three times a week, for most people, that will only make up about 5% of their total weekly calorie burn. Look, everyone should exercise. It is essential for our physical and mental health. And if you're on a weight loss journey and you're doing regular exercise, it will be a fantastic support tool. But don't put too much emphasis on it because trust me, it is not the be all and end all. Number five, weighing yourself too often. Most fitness people will tell you to weigh every day, add that number and divide it by seven and that gives you your weekly average weight and that is what you should use. The theory of that is fantastic apart from one small thing. Most people that have a weight issue are emotionally attached to the scales. And when they see the scales go up, it messes with their head. Now, I could sit here and go, well, stop getting emotionally attached to the scales. Is it that easy to stop emotional attachment? No. Everyone's been in a bad relationship. You might have a partner that's cheated on you and you hate their guts, but deep down, you still love them. Why? Emotional attachment. And the scales is like an abusive relationship. 
step away from the scales. The least you weigh, as long as you're being consistent, the more positive results you are going to get when you step on the scales. Once you develop a healthy relationship with the scales, you can weigh yourself as much as you want to. But until you develop that healthy relationship, I recommend only weighing once every two weeks at the most. Number six, going from one extreme to another, going from averaging a thousand steps a day to suddenly doing 10,000 steps a day, going from eating 3,000 calories a day to eating 800 calories a day, five takeaways a week to just going cold turkey. I used to call it the January syndrome. In January, people that I've never seen before have joined the gym and next thing they're in every day walking for an hour on a treadmill. That gets flipping boring, flipping quickly because they've gone to an extreme. Your weight loss journey has to be sustainable. The things that you're going to do to support your weight loss has to fit into your everyday lifestyle. And just jumping from these extremes, it's not sustainable. It's not going to stick to your lifestyle and you're going to fail. Well, to be honest with you, you're failing before you've even started. Number seven, comparing yourself with others. You're feeling great, you're 10 weeks in, you've lost the stone, you're buzzing and suddenly Deborah on the next desk chirps up, well, I've been doing Cambridge plan for the last two weeks and I've lost 11 stone and suddenly she gets into your head. The reality is Deborah will do Cambridge for a month, she'll be back to old habits and she'll be heavier than when she started. Losing a stone in 10 weeks is amazing progress. Theodore Roosevelt said, comparison is the thief of joy. And it is an amazing saying. There is 8 billion people on this planet and we all have different fingerprints for a reason because we are all individuals. Don't compare your losses to other people. Don't compare your steps to other people. Don't compare what you lift with other people. Stay in your own lane. There is nothing wrong with taking inspiration from others and using that inspiration as motivation for you to smash your journey but please, you just need to do you. Number eight, not being patient. Everybody wants weight loss yesterday. And there's a number of reasons, but there is two main ones for me. Number one, fad diets. There is no education around fad diets. And lots of us do these crazy, weird and wonderful fad diets and drop lots of weight quickly. And we just think that is the reality. We should be able to keep that going for the entirety of our journey. No, at the start of the journey, we tend to get what's called a whoosh effect, where we lose quite a bit of water retention as well as body fat. When the water retention has gone out of the body, we just start to lose body fat. And that, healthy, sustainable, is about a pound a week on average for most people. The second reason I feel why we are impatient is because we've been at this for so long. And when you've been doing something for ages and consistently fail at it, our patience wears thin and we just forever look for that quick fix, the magic pill. There isn't one. Trying to find the quick fix to weight loss is like trying to find a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. The tortoise and the hare, it's something I use all the time. And in terms of winning the weight loss race, the tortoise will always win. Number nine trying to be perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect weight loss journey. And if you think you're going to have a perfect weight loss journey, you are failing before you even start. I like to compare a weight loss journey with a car journey. If I left my house here now and drove to London, it's about 250 miles. I'm probably going to get stopped at some traffic lights. I'm probably going to get stuck in a bit of traffic. I might have a puncture. There might be a bad accident. I'm certainly going to stop at some services and have a pee and get some food. All these things just put little bumps in. They just slow the journey down a little bit. But as long as I keep progressing forward, I will get to my destination. Your weight loss journey is no different. A lot of people either try and live life or do weight loss. And if you're trying to separate them, you're going to fail at both. Your weight loss journey has to be part of your life. And part of life is having a holiday, celebrating Christmas, enjoying your birthday every year. These things are just little pause buttons. They don't stop the journey unless you want them to. As long as at the end of that pause button, you press play again and you keep going forward, you will get to your destination. Number 10, last but by no means least, you're not part of the Real Lost Boss crew. Now you don't need to join my crew, but when we're trying to achieve something that takes a good amount of time, that we find hard, 
Having extra support and accountability is invaluable. I've got over 320 members in my community and the members that get really involved, get the most support, have the most accountability and tend to get the best results. Like I say, you don't need to join my crew, but go and find a group out there that uses the same philosophies that you're using to lose weight that's going to give you that extra support and that accountability. If you want to come and be part of the Real Lost Boss crew, I will put details in the description of this podcast of my community that I offer and also my full-blown one-to-one plan. There you go, guys. 10 common mistakes you've either made or you are making on your weight loss journey. And if you work at eradicating those out, it is going to give you a much greater chance of success. As always, I'd appreciate a follow, a subscribe, a like, a comment, whichever platform you're watching this on. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, make sure you boss your weight loss.